mind. Amen. Yeah. To the Word of God. Amen. Everybody have your Word? Yeah. Amen. I know you do because this is a Word church. Yeah. Amen. That's why the atmosphere is the way it is. Yeah. We're going to take several scriptures. Amen. We're going to take the book of Zechariah. Chapter 3, I believe I would take 3 and 4, maybe 5, but you just have to stay with me. We're going to take Job 14, 14. We're going to take Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. We're going to take 2 Corinthians 3, 18. We're going to reach over and grab Philippians 3.21. Might even grab 1 Corinthians 15.51 through 57. Now some of this you just have to take home for yourself. I might mention, I'm going to build a skeleton, but you might put the meat on the bone. Amen. We'll, we'll mention some of those scriptures, amen. But only the first text we're going to read together, amen, because I believe in a system now. George Bush said something years ago about no child left behind for him. It didn't work out, but I adopted that for the church as in no saint left behind, amen. Church is not supposed to be a spectator sport. It's a, it's, it's, it's a participator amen. event. So we all participate in worship, amen. Amen. So at least I'm, I'm, to keep me honest and to keep us together, at least I'm giving you the, we're going to read the first one together. Amen. Right. I'm going to let you read it. You always want the preacher to do all the work. I'm going to let you do some work. If you have Zechariah chapter 3, say amen. Amen. That means about 50% of you have it. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Those that said a man and have it begin reading now. Along. 
But, I mean, just for sake, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, but we all with open face. Behold, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into that same image. Uh-huh. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In Philippians 3.21, who should change our vile body, yes. that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, uh-huh. according, <coughs> according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Uh-huh. Amen. And the key word again is what? Change. Change. So we will take this word change. And we want to understand that this word change, it can also mean transformation. Or in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians 3.18 and Philippians 3.21, that word change comes from the Greek word metamorphosis. It means metamorphosis. We get this word metamorphosis from this word, this Greek word, metamorphosis, and we use it to change, to use, to explain the process of how a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and come out as a butterfly. Yes. And I don't know about you, I, at least for myself, I don't like nasty, ugly, yucky, slimy caterpillars. <laughs> But I like the beautiful, majestic, colorful display of a butterfly. Amen. Metamorphosis explains how that nasty, ugly, yucky caterpillar can go into a cocoon and go through this metamorphosis, this change, or this transformation and come out this majestic, aesthetically pleasing butterfly right. and go from crawling to flying. Right. Yeah. And we must, and we're going to use that understanding when we look at this word change because in our key text in Zechariah 3, verse 4 and 5. Now Joshua was clothed with what? <coughs> Filthy garments. Filthy garments. And stood before the angel. And it was the angel that spoke to the people that Joshua stood before. And, and he told the people, he told the, the angel told the people right. to take away his filthy garments. And then the angel spoke to Joshua and told him what he did. He said, I've caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Yes. And I have changed thee with change of raiment. I have clothed thee with change of raiment. I have clothed thee. I put some new clothes on you, basically. Yes. So with that idea, we will teach unto you today and preach unto you today Jesus Will you help me change my clothes? Yes, sir. Because all of us need to continually go through our transformation. I don't care if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, you still need changing. Yes, yes. Because I will tell everybody you can be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and still meet the qualifications of going to hell. All right. You know, I know you don't like that, but it's right. Because it's a process called saved, saving, and ultimately saved. Saved is when you, what we call being born again. But, and then we call saving Sanctification. Sanctification is the saving process. See, we have a problem. We put so much emphasis on the saving event that we don't put enough emphasis on the saving process. Yes, you can be saved and filled, baptized with remission of sins, but you need to go through the process after that. Because you can't skip the process and expect to be ultimately saved and get to glory. You have to have all that 
process. Because saving is a process. Joshua, man of God, stood there with filthy garments on. And the thing is, when the angel had spoke to the people and told them to take away his filthy garments, they had to be an extension of God. Because the angel told Joshua that I have clothing with change of raiment. It's a process that's going on that the church of the living God has a duty to help people change their clothes. As God furnishes you with new clothes. Now, it it, it, it it comes to my understanding that when I also read the historical text of Lazarus, All right. Jesus came to the sepulcher of Lazarus. Lazarus was wrapped in his burial clothes, see, from head to toe, right. in the custom of the Jewish tradition. Right. They will wrap you from head to toe and they will anoint your body. Now, mind you, Lazarus was dead, dead. He wasn't just brain dead or he wasn't <clears throat> clinically dead. He was completely dead. Rigor mortis that in four days. Now, the sepulcher, now this is extra biblical, so you can take it or leave it, it doesn't matter, but his, his sepulcher was Traditionally, it might have been 13 steps down. Or it, might have been, it might have been stairs that go, that go down into the cave or into the sepulcher. Right. Because that's how they were buried. That's just tradition. Uh-huh. Now, mind you, Mary and Martha, they were all mad at Jesus. Because they said, if he would have been there, uh-huh. Lazarus would have never had died. But see, we were talking earlier about in Sunday school, God has a plan. And his plan is better than the devil's plan. And Jesus came, and mind you, all he did was he he spoke. He said, Lazarus, come. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, Lazarus was a very popular name among the Jewish people. It might have been a whole lot of Lazarus in the grave. Mm -hmm. But see, Jesus, when he said Lazarus, Jesus doesn't speak to you. He speaks to your soul. Because James Perry could be in the grave with a thousand other James Perry, but if he say James Perry come and he's talking to this James Perry, other James Perry is not going to rise up but this James Perry. And when Lazarus got up because he heard the living God, he heard the voice of he that can quicken the dead. Yeah, yeah. Lazarus got up. Now I don't know how he got up because he was wrapped from head to toe. And mind you, I don't know even how he got out the sepulcher if they had any steps that was uh, descending into the ground. But mind you, he heard Jesus' voice. And he had, I don't know if he hopped up each step. I don't know if, I don't know how he got up the steps because when he got out there, he was still wrapped from head to toe. How I know that? Because Jesus looked at Mark, Mary and Martha and everyone else and he said, now you lose him. Right. So that means he had to still be cold. Yeah, <laughs> this is a lesson to the church. Yeah. This is a lesson to the church because Matthew chapter 16 verse 19, it says, uh, and it talks about whatsoever that I shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and, and whether the loose on 